We are on number 11. Number 11. Sinai customized her bicycle by exchanging the front wheel for a wheel that had one half the diameter of the back wheel. So this will be a weird looking bicycle. We're going to have a small wheel in front. And then, let's see if I can draw a bicycle. Maybe. Oh, it looks like the wheel. No. Then you have a huge wheel in the back, right? Because the diameter of this wheel is half of the diameter of that wheel. Now when Sinai rides the bicycle, how many revolutions does the front wheel make for each revolution of the back wheel? All right. Well, when you do this, when you do this problem, what you need is so the, the front. How many revolutions does the front wheel make for each revolution of the back wheel? And let me just make sure it says that the, the front wheel has half the diameter of the back wheel. So let me to ask you a question. If if the back wheel goes around, well, that's essentially what they're just asking. Let's 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 make up numbers. Let's say that the back wheels, um, the back wheels diameter, or let's say it's circum, it's radius. Right? Let's say the back wheel has a radius of 2. So then what's its circumference? Its circumference for the back wheel would be 2 pi r. So it would be 2 times pi times 2, which is equal to 4 pi. Right? The circumference, if this has half the diameter, so it will also have half the radius. So the circumference would just be 2 pi r, which would be 2 pi. So this one, if you have half the diameter, you also have half the circumference. And so when this wheel does one revolution. When this wheel does one revolution, how far has the bicycle traveled? Assuming in, you know, the wheel hasn't skidded or anything. Well, when this back wheel does one revolution, the bicycle would have traveled 4 pi whatever our units, you know, 4 pi feet if that's our units, right? So if the bicycle's traveled for the 4 pi units, it's going to, you know, it's going to travel 4 pi units in the front of the bicycle as well. So the f if if we've traveled 4 pi units, how many times does this wheel have to turn around to travel 4 pi units? Well, in one revolution, this wheel, it's 2 pi. So this wheel actually has to turn around twice. It go turns around twice for every one revolution of the big wheel. Hopefully that makes sense. You just have to realize that one revolution of the big wheel is going to be twice the circumference of the front wheel. And so the front wheel has to turn around twice when the bike goes over that same distance. So the answer, so their question is, how many revolutions does the front wheel make for each revolution of the back wheel? Well, the answer is C. Whoop, that looks like an E, but the answer is C, 2. Problem number 12. All right. A list of numbers contains P positive and N negative numbers. So P pos, N negative. If a number is picked at random from the list, the probability that the number is positive is 3 fifths. What is the value of n over p? OK, so the probability of getting a positive is n is, no, no, sorry, is 3 fifths. So what is the probability of getting a positive? A probability of getting a positive is going to be equal to p over over n or is it going to be it's, it's the probability of of the the number of positive numbers we have over the total numbers we have right that's the probability of getting a positive number right if if this was red marbles and blue marbles the probability of getting a red marble would be you know the number of red over the total number of marbles right so similar here it's the probability it's the number of positive numbers over the total numbers and the total numbers are the positive numbers plus the negative numbers and now they are asking us for what is the value. Well, again, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. If the number is picked at random from the list, the probability that the number is positive, right? This is the probability that's positive is three over five. What is the value of n over p? So now let's solve for n over p. So we could cross multiply here, right? So we could say five p, five p is equal to three times this is equal to three p plus 3n. I just cross multiplied. And then, let's see, subtract p from both sides. You get 2p is equal to 3n. And we want to figure out n over p, right? So let's divide both sides by p. So you get 2 is equal to 3n over p. And let's divide both sides by 3. 
and you get 2 over 3 is equal to n over p. And we are done. n over p is equal to 2 over 3, which is choice c. Wasn't too bad. Problem 13. Uh, clear image, great colors. And I will do it in this tacky green. Problem 13. The total daily cost, C in dollars, of producing x units of a certain product is given by the function. All right, we got a cost function right here. C of x is equal to 600 x minus 200 over x plus k. And they're telling us k is a constant. And x is less than or equal to 100. x is less than or equal to 100. Fair enough. If 20 units were produced yesterday for a total cost of $640, what is the value of k? So 20 units. So they're essentially saying that c of 20, the cost of producing 20 units, is equal to $640. So we can just use this information to now solve for k. So c of 20, so c. 20 is going to be equal, put in 20 into this equation. So it's 600 times 20 minus 200, all of that over 20, right? C of 20, right? All of that over 20. And we also know that, oh, oh, sorry, plus k, I can't forget the plus k, plus k is equal to, and we know that equals to 640, right? And what is this equal to? Well, we actually don't even have to multiply it, right? Because this is 600 times 20, and what's 200? 200 is 10 times 20, right? So you can divide the top and the bottom by 20. So you get 20, 20, 20. So you're just left with 600. I mean, you could multiply it out if you don't understand what I just did. But you get 600 minus 10 plus k is equal to 640. So you get 590 plus k is equal to 640. Subtract 590 from both sides. You get k is equal to 50. And that is choice b. So you literally just have to set, you know, figure out, uh, substitute the x in when you, you know, for into our cost function, and then set that equal to 640 dollars, and you just solve for k. Problem 14. 14. For how many ordered pairs of positive integers x, y, positive integers, integers x, y, is 2x plus 3y less than 6? So these are positive integers, right? So let's, I mean, we could figure them out. The zero, we can't use zero. So if x is x, y. If x is 1, right, what can y equal? So then we have 2, then we have 2 plus 3y is less than 6. This is the case of x is equal to 1. So then we'd have 3y is less than 4. So the only, so you know, we'd have y would have to be less than 4 thirds. So the only situation where y is less than 4 thirds is y would have to be 1, right? Because that's the only positive integer less than 4 thirds. If x is 2, then we have. 4 plus 3y, right? 2 times 2 is less than 6. And so you have 3y is less than 2. y is less than 2 thirds. Well, I don't see any, any value where, I don't see any positive integers that are less than 2 thirds. So x can't even be equal to 2, right? So n neither of these numbers can get any bigger than 1 or 1. So there's only one ordered pair of positive integers that positive integers, and that's the trick, that satisfy this equation, one and one. And we know because immediately when we just raise one of them above two, we get above six, no matter what. We can't find a positive integer that satisfies it. So that's it. It's just choice A. Not too bad. And I will see you in the next